This is the brand new Detlef's Trend A-Class. An A-Class from Germany without the £100,000 price tag. In fact, this one is 62,990. It's a three and a half ton vehicle and 7.39 meters long. There are shorter models in the range, but this one, 7.39. Then there are some options on this one. The alloy wheels, the design pack inside, the 150 bhp engine and Comfortmatic gearbox, and then a Loudoms pack, which gives you some Deathlefts factory fitted options in a three and a half gram package that really makes the equipment level everything that you need. What did you get? Well, you get the satellite dish and TV, you get the reversing camera with doubled in radio Bluetooth unit, and you also get the awning. So at 71,000 just over, this van really has everything you need. Apart from anything else, the trend is significantly upgraded for the UK market to start with. So now I'm gonna tell you what is so good about this motorhome, but wait a bit longer and you'll also see the things I don't like so much about it. So the best thing about this driving this death left is the fact it's an A-Class. Just look at the vision out of this vehicle. You've got a real king of the road feeling. It is a wonderful view out. Now, one of the first things to like about this motorhome is the garage. Despite this being an island bed model, it has got a really good sized garage. Nothing uh, getting in the way. It's just a big storage space. Not far short of a metre high inside and pretty much a metre across. So plenty of space for all your junk. One of the first things you notice when you come into this death lifts is the extra wide habitation door. And if you've got bundles of bedding when you're loading up from home, that's a good feature. Fly screen on the door as well, and it is linked to the central locking. So that's another plus. TV is nicely located. It's a sensible height. You won't get crick neck looking at TV up in a top cupboard and it pulls out to a comfortable viewing height too. So that's absolutely ideal. Control panels not as uh, swish and complicated as some of the other Deathless units, but it does still have a bit of style about it. And there's a little bit of extra storage maybe for brollies down here as well. And somewhere too convenient to put your TV remote control. And if you come in with wet, dirty boots, you've got the ideal locker to put them in. Very convenient. But the thing I've never seen in a motorhome before is this magnetic pin board. There we go. So first off, there's plenty to like about this lounge area. Not least, these are Gooty Captain's chairs, which are absolutely superb. Not only do they have all the usual adjustment, but you can actually tilt the bases as well, which is rather neat. And then there's the feeling of space. This is a 7.39 metre motorhome, not huge, typical, typical island bed motorhome size. But this lounge, it's not actually bigger than you'd normally get, but it just feels it. There's so much light, um, white surface on the table, which reflects the light too. You've got a big hecky sunroof. You've got this panoramic windscreen. And not only that, because that's typical A-class feature, you've got these really deep side windows as well. So it feels huge in here. Not only that, the table, well, that's typically German. It's as solid, well, solid enough to dance on near enough. And although it's big, big enough for four people to dine from, it's not so big that it gets in the way. Slide it out, everybody can reach the dinner, but it's not a big problem. Automotive type 
uh, head restraints for the rear passengers. That's another good thing. And there's just a nice ambiance in this vehicle with the uh, design package on this one, which gives you various changes to the decor and, and a bit, a few bits of bling. The key change probably is the Virginia oak furniture. This Detlef's really comes into its own as a four berth because you've got this very easy to use drop down bed in the cab. And of course, because it's an A-class and the bed is over the cab rather than over the lounge, you're not losing all your seating area when you drop the bed down. Now, just get the cab seats out of the way and it is as easy as that to pull it down, absolutely effortless. Ladder drops in and, well, no shortage of space up here. Reading lights and look at the way the curtains just neatly clip into space, into place, so that when you stow the bed, they're not untidy or hanging out. Very, very neat. And because of the squareness of the external shape, you've got as much headroom here as your partner has there. The kitchen layout is quite typical, but good points are the oven grill at a sensible height, plenty of storage, including a huge, easy to clean cutlery drawer, and the tall fridge freezer with a large drawer below. As you'd expect, the master bedroom gets its own proper ensuite. Just open the toilet door around, and now the back end of the vehicle is completely private from the front. The toilet area itself has just enough room, even with the door closed. And as long as you're not too broad and restricted by the shoulder space here, it's a decent enough amount of room. Good basin, lack of uh, worktop around the basin itself is made up for by this flat surface here, somewhere to put things down. Big mirror, and then if this storage isn't enough, for all your beautification products, then you really are a prima donna. Now, before you get to that, of course, you'll need a shower. And the fact that you've got this false floor so you can actually walk through this area does mean that the shower's a lot less intrusive in terms of space in this vehicle. Then, when you remove the false floor to actually use the shower, you step down into the cubicle. So, look at the amount of headroom there's got to be a good six foot six in there, so tallest motorhomers are going to be okay. It's a decent sized shower cubicle as well, and in there, there's a drying rail for any wet clothes, so that's good too. Again, the island bed format is quite typical, but what isn't typical is the quality of this mattress. It does feel really something quite special when you're lying on here. It's a good width too, 1.49 meters, and well, just look at it. It has the feeling of being in a boutique hotel bedroom. In terms of dimensions, yes, there's decent room to get around the foot of the bed, but this is with the mattress set at 1.79 meters. Take it up to 1.89 meters, bit over six foot, and just slot that cushion in for a proper mattress length. And then down here, underneath the end of the bed, really good storage for all your clothes with the Truma combi underneath, so your socks will be lovely and toasty warm in the morning. There's not a lot to criticise about this front lounge area, but one aspect, although there's plenty of light, both uh, natural and artificial, none of the lights, none of the artificial lighting is directionally adjustable. You've got these little reading lights set into cupboards and ceiling over the in the in the base of the drop-down bed, but none of it can be uh, pointed to highlight what you're reading. And the other issue, a lot of motorhome buyers like a flat floor through the vehicle so you don't trip up. Well, this van has a step down from the lounge and a step up again into the bedroom. So the negatives of this kitchen, well, there's not a vast amount of worktop. The other thing is, well, you've got these lovely white surfaces, slightly textured. I'm not sure how that's gonna look when I've splashed tomato soup up the side of it. Well, that only time will tell. The other thing is, not specifically a kitchen feature because this is throughout the motorhome, but reflecting the fact that this is an entry-level deathlift, you've only got the cheaper flat type of blinds. 
And finally, this cupboard down here, well, it's huge. But the downside of that is I can only just reach the end of it. So the downside of this bedroom, well, the big one, is the lack of headroom to sit up in bed. If you look, well, you're not gonna sit comfortably to eat your breakfast in bed here. And we've removed most of the carpets in this vehicle because the cameraman's a bit messy, but look at the carpet color. It's not the most practical when you come in off a wet rally field. So masses of storage in here, but have you got enough payload? Well, Detlef says that on a three and a half ton chassis, you've got 438 kilos, but that's the standard UK model. This one's got over a hundred kilos worth of options on it. So you're down to not far, not far over 300 kilos. That's gonna struggle as a four berth. So if you're gonna use this van as a four berth, you're gonna to need to upgrade to 3850 or as an option further beyond that for 250 on a maxi chassis. Yes, this is a German A-Class from a brand that has a cast iron reputation for quality, but looks wise, well, I don't think you could call it beautiful. And then it falls into the usual A-Class problem of bonnet access. First of all, it does swing down out of the way fairly neatly, but although the windscreen washer reservoir is quite accessible there, I'm not so sure about having to top up some of these other areas. So, Detlef Trend I7057DBM. It's one of those motorhomes that I was a bit nonplussed with to start with, to be honest, but the more I've looked at it, the more time I've spent with it, the more I like it. If you can live with the external appearance, it's a bit boxy, the rest of it, most of it, is pretty damn good. The only thing is, for 10 grand less, you could have the low profile version. And unless you need four birds, or unless you really must have an A-class, I think I'd go low profile. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for lots more great motorhome reviews. And why not subscribe?